QuickBooks Desktop 2023, receive payment and make deposit. Let's do it with Intuit's QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in QuickBooks Desktop, Get Great Guitars Practice File. We started up in a prior presentation going through the setup process we do every time, maximizing the home page to the gray area in the view drop down. We got the hide icon bar, open windows list checked off, open windows open on the left hand side. Going to the reports drop down, company and financial, looking at the profit and loss, the P&L, the income statement, range and change in 010123 to 123123. Let's customize it so that we can go to the fonts, the numbers, and we can change the size of that font to 12. Okay, yes please, and okay. The other big report, reports drop down, company and financial, this time the balance sheet report. Customize it, and the rangings, they are a changings. 010123 to 123 fonts and numbers let's change the font size up to let's go to 14 i think that was we can make it to 14 without any problems and then let's open up the trial balance too we're going to add that to our routine here at least for now accounting we'll see if it sticks forever accounting and taxes trial balance this time ranging to the changings the rangings they are a changing oh one oh one two three twelve three one two three I had to say that and it messed up my whole process. Customizing and then fonts and numbers, changing the font. Let's bring this one up to 16. We're getting crazy, get crazy. There we go, okay, and there we have that. That's the setup process we do every time or at least a variant of it. Going back to the home page and the prior presentations, we have been entering invoices. Now we're gonna do the double step action of receiving the payment and then recording the deposit. So just a quick recap that when you have the revenue cycle, the customer cycle, the accounts receivable cycle, we might be on a cash-based system or we might be on an accrual-based system. And that's not just by choice, but by design of the, in, the kind of company we are in. So if we have to basically bill the client for doing the work or providing the inventory before we receive the payment, then we're gonna create an invoice. That's gonna go through accounts receivable. If we're at the check register, for example, in a store situation, that's when we get paid at the same point in time. And that's when we create the sales receipt. And you can even go a step further than a cash-based system, which is one where we're getting a sales receipt to one where it's not really designed in QuickBooks to use this way, but simply recording the deposit to revenue or sales when we get the money, possibly if we have like gig work, if you got paid by YouTube or something like that, you might use the deposit form. But these two forms are the two forms that are typically gonna be used. We're talking about an accrual process here where we created invoices in the past. Now we're gonna go to the receive payments, remembering that when we receive the payment, we could deposit it directly into the checking account at that point, but the default is that we put it into undeposited funds and we're gonna keep that as the default so that if there's any grouping of those payments, having multiple payments, for example, that will be put into the bank in one group sum, such as if we have credit cards or if we have a cash type of payments, then we can then group them with the deposit matching or matching up grouping together sales receipts and receive payments so that the amount that's in our system as a deposit matches what the grouping will be on the bank statement, making the reconciliation process as easy as possible. Let's first go to the customer area, go into the customer drop down, customer center. We're imagining we're gonna get a payment from customer payment from Anderson. Let's say Anderson right up top. 
If I look at all the transactions for Anderson, I might select transactions, say invoices maybe. I could drill down on the invoices and maybe I just want the open invoices. There's the open invoice that we're gonna receive a payment. If I double click on that, I could go to the receive payments up here. That's one way we could get there. I'm not gonna do it that way this time. I could close this out. We could also search for the invoices in the transactions area, invoices, open invoices for example, and look for the invoices that way. Or I might just go to the home page, and this is the way we'll do it this time, and just say, hey, I had an invoice, now I'm just gonna receive the payment. I'm gonna just type in who I received the payment from, Anderson. You can see it pops up in the drop down. We're gonna say, okay, there it is. There's the invoice. So if I just click on the invoice, uh, then it'll populate the amount up top. If I received an amount other than that, then I could adjust it. I could adjust the amount that we got paid which would still leave an outstanding balance on the invoice. So just note that you have that option, but by default, it will then populate the amount up top here if you click on the invoice. And so then the date, let's say it's gonna be the 25th of uh, 2023, then how did we get paid? Is it cash? Is it check? Is it credit card, e-check? Mainly these are gonna be kind of referential tools that might help us to do sorting of transactions. We're gonna imagine it's cash, even though it's a large amount, because we wanna imagine possibly grouping the cash payments together when we make one deposit of multiple customer payments. If it was a check, it's more likely if we always get checks or electronic payments that it will go into our bank account in the same format uh, as, the, as the customer payment, each one of them being separate. If it's a credit card, it's more likely that it's gonna have a grouping situation that we wanna go through undeposited funds. Also note though, even if you get a check or transfer e-check, that's always the same grouping, one customer check at a time, you still might wanna use undeposited funds because that allows you to then use the deposit form as the only kind of form that really increases the checking account, which can help for your sorting. So I still kind of like that system in, in any case. And uh, note that we have the option here. That option is found in the edit dropdown, preferences. If you go to the payments right there, customer, this is all uh, checked off by default. You have to uncheck it in order to get the, this little field here to give you a, the possibility of depositing in the checking account if you so choose. What is this gonna do? Well, it's a customer payment. That means it's gonna decrease the accounts receivable. That's what it does. The other side by default goes into undeposited funds, a clearing account, in essence, a cash account, but not a checking account. And that's what we will do. So we're gonna, I'm gonna close it. I can't see the, the blue button because I've maximized my screen too much. So I'm just gonna X out and say, yes, record it. And then I'm gonna go into the balance sheet and we can go, it's not in the checking account, it went into undeposited funds. Double clicking on undeposited funds, there's the payment, boom. Double clicking on it, there it is. Closing this out, closing this out. Remember that this undeposited funds is a clearing account, essentially a cash account, but not a checking account. Therefore, it's not under the checking category because this account kind of checking accounts are accounts that have a, a different functionality in QuickBooks, such as the possibility to connect to bank feeds. So the fact that this acts like a, an, a other current asset account, even though it's kind of a cash account, is why it's down here. That's a little bit confusing, but it is what it is. So we're gonna, we're gonna clear that out and make the deposit with it, shortly putting it into the bank account. Also note, if you go to the home page, we've got this little one, which indicates that there is a transaction that was made from either a receive payment or create sales receipt that represents what is currently in the balance sheet account of undeposited funds. Let's do another one. Let's go to the customer center again. I could do that by clicking here or in the open windows or in the drop down. I can go to, and I'm gonna imagine we got a payment from Eric Music. And once again, I could sort all day, all items. I might sort by invoices here and then maybe the open invoices, there's the invoice that I want to be dealing with. I could also find that by going to the transactions. I can go to my invoices. Notice the if I go to all invoices, these are the ones including the one that I just have received a payment on, which, which by the way, if I go back on over here and say that where were we before music store stuff and I look at all transactions, uh, all transactions, 
for all dates. Was it music store stuff? No, it was Anderson Guitars. So if I go into Anderson Guitars, you can see now we've got you, we've got the payment. And if I if I look at just the open invoices now, there are no open invoices, right? And if I go into all transactions and I look at one of these invoices, then it now shows as uh, paid here. Paid. I can also look at the C history and see you know the information related to that. We haven't yet deposited it, so I'm going to close that back out. And so that looks good. Now I'm going to go to Eric Music. And so there's the invoice there. Let's this time double click on this invoice. And then I'm going to make the receive payment from it by clicking the receive payment up top. And so now it's going to populate Eric Music. It's got the invoice checked off. If I double click on this invoice, it takes me to the actual invoice. Closing this back out. The amount looks good. I'm going to keep it as cash, even though it's not likely we would get 30,415 cash, but we'll keep it there. And we're going to go to undeposited funds. So what's this going to do? Decrease the accounts uh, receivable for er Eric Music and the other side is going to go to undeposited funds. Let's go ahead and X out and save it. I'm going to save it by Xing out. And let's first look here. So if I look at, at uh, Eric Music now, if I was to look at just the invoices, for example, there's the invoice. If I was to say, let's just look at open invoices. We don't have any because now it's not open anymore. If I go back to all transactions and I double click on this invoice, we can see it as having been paid uh, here. So that looks uh, good. And then if I go to, to the balance sheet, we can see in undeposited funds, double clicking on it. We've got the the amount here for the 30,450, closing that out. The other side in accounts receivable, Eric Music, 30,450. We can also see that same kind of stuff with the subledger for accounts receivable, which we would probably do in the customer center as we saw, but the subledger will see how it ties out to the accounts receivable of that 125750. So if I go to the customer receivable, customer balance detail then we've got eric music that's what we expect to see it going up with an invoice down with a payment that's the normal cycle we would see with all the accounts receivable the amount totals out to 12,757.50 which should match out what's on the balance sheet 12,757.50 now we're going to put that stuff in the bank so we're going to go to the home page this is the, the cycle that we would imagine happening. We're gonna receive payments during the day if they're cash payments or if they're credit card payments or whatever. And we're gonna be receiving the payments for the sales we make in the store. And whether they're cash or not, let's imagine they're cash here. Credit card has its own grouping system that we would have to get down with the credit card company. But if they were cash, wherever we got the cash, whether it be from receiving payments that were first invoiced from, or from the create sales receipt at the check register, we want to deposit that cash into the bank at the end of the day. When we make the deposit in the bank, we're gonna make one deposit. That's the idea. Therefore, I'm gonna click on both of these. Also re remember that, that red two, just let's close that out. That red number two represents that we've got something from these two items. That red number two represents there's two items that are making up the balance currently in undeposited funds on the balance sheet, which we now want to make deposited into the checking account. So I'm, and also note that if it wasn't connected to the sales receipt or the received payments and I was doing something to the checking account, I might use the check register. That would be the easiest way to do the data input or bank feeds if you were doing the bank feeds. But because it's connected, then you got to think about how it's going to be connected and therefore the record deposit is a perfect form because of this pop-up which allows us to check them both off showing the 3407250 which is the amount that will then show up on the checking account detail which will allow us to reconcile to the amount on the bank statement from the bank which will be the same grouped amount it will also give us the two separate amounts that will show up in the undeposited uh, funds so that we can see the activity broken out in the undeposited funds in the clearing account, it going up and down. So we've got Anderson Guitars, the date's gonna be the 125, decrease in the checking account. The other side is, is gonna bring undeposited funds back down to zero. The clearing account undeposited funds went up, went back down, or will go back down once I save it and close it. Let's do it now. Back to the balance sheet. So if we go here, we could say, okay, the checking account should have gone up 
It goes up by the one lump sum, 34.72.50, double clicking on that. Even though there's these two line items, it goes into the checking account as one lump sum, that amount being the amount that we expect to see in the bank statement, making reconciliation easy. And then we got the split account. It's split here, even though the other account is only undeposited funds because there's two line items. That's kind of one of the downsides of QuickBooks is the fact that it ends up with those splits because of the way it does that instead of being able to show us the one other account that's impacted uh, in that one line item. But that's that's a picky, you know, every accounting, you know, QuickBooks does a pretty good job of that kind of stuff. But in any case, you can't see the other item here. So you'd, you'd have to go to customize up top and you'd have to go to advanced. And I want to see all the active items, not just the zeroed ones because it went back to zero. Then I can see the zero and I can double click on it. Now, normally I would be using the trial balance, which has that as the default, if I'm just kind of checking transactions and using the zoom feature. So notice it already has the default of this anything with activity being present. If I go into it, notice those two deposits are separate line items, which is important because you can see it go up and then down. You can see the clearing, you know, tying itself out. Whereas if you had just one line item, it wouldn't, it wouldn't tie together. So it's nice that it's broken out here in separate line items. And it's nice that it's grouped together up here in the checking account so that you can use that one line item to reconcile to what's on the bank statement, which will be one line item uh, when we do the bank reconciliation, which we'll do in a whole nother section. All right, so that's basically it. Uh, so that's it. So then we can check your numbers here on the trial balance, which I think is the best place to do that. If you have any problems, then uh, you can try changing the date range and drill down on the data to change any dates. If you have an issue, we will be working a transaction detail report at the end of the month entering of the transaction, which can help to check the numbers at that point. Thank you.